Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So there's a lot of misconceptions about vegans and for whatever reason, I've been hearing more and more of them online lately. So in this video, I thought I would go over the top 10 things that people get wrong about vegans. So there's a bunch of them and I might miss some of them. So if I do, or if you disagree with me on any of them, definitely put it in the comment section down below. So number one, vegans are weak and skinny. So as if everybody has to be focused on gaining muscle or being this, you know, big muscular bodybuilder. Uh, and the same can be said for people that are on an omnivorous diet. Like there's definitely people that eat meat that are skinny as well. So there are tons of vegans out there that are strong and muscular, including, I like to think myself, and of course, a bunch of my friends that are also online personalities as well. And I'm sure a bunch of you that are watching this. And with all that we do to put this message out there, I can't believe that this myth and misconception is still getting thrown around. So maybe people do notice that vegans are skinnier because on average, vegans do have a lower BMI. It's because this diet is just so good for helping with weight management. So there's nothing wrong if you are a skinny vegan or if you don't focus on building muscle or whatever, but there's no reason why if you're on a vegan diet that you can't be strong and muscular. Number two, vegans think that they are better than everyone. So uh, most vegans just want to do their thing and be left alone for the most part. And they aren't going around like thinking I'm better than this person or that person. And I think that most vegans understand that before they went vegan, they weren't. They used to eat meat and they would still have considered themselves a good person with good morals and all that. I know I did. And at some point along the way, something clicked, whether it was watching a certain documentary or seeing pictures and videos of like slaughterhouse footage, just something changed in my mind and in many people's minds and they just decided, I do not want to support this anymore. Lots of vegans are really excited about what they're doing. They're helping the animals, they feel amazing and they want to share this with others. And a lot of the time when they do, other people feel like they are being put down and this kind of gets them into some sort of defensive mode and then they think that, you know, this person is putting themselves on a pedestal. And you can kind of compare it to this. It's like when somebody is a drinker and then they meet someone at a party or whatever who doesn't drink, it often kind of puts a mirror onto what they're doing and then they all of a sudden have to question, you know, their own actions and yeah, people get defensive. So I guess maybe that's why people get this preconceived notion that vegans think they're better than everyone, but really they don't. Number three, vegans kill more animals than meat eaters do. So I've heard this repeated so much lately, especially in comments online, and I've even seen it in some reels. Uh, and I think uh, Ted Nugent recently went on the Joe Rogan podcast, and he made this claim saying that, if you really want to kill the most things, be a vegan. So the idea is that one cow can feed a whole bunch of people, whereas the deaths that happen from combine harvesting and the protection of crops kills more animals than, you know, just that one cow dying for a bunch of people to eat. So this comparison might have some truth to it when you consider the very best case scenario of pasture raised cows, you know, compared to the mice and other small mammals that are killed in harvesting and protecting the monocrop grains that we eat. But we know that it's such a tiny percentage of the meat that people are eating. Less than 5% of cows are pasture raised and finished and like a fraction of a percentage of chickens. But what most people are eating is factory farmed animals that are fed grain and soy. If we were to use this as the comparison to just humans eating those foods, you would see that this statement is extremely false. It takes up to 10 pounds of animal feed to create one pound of edible beef. So how anyone can make this assertion is beyond me. And then think of the fishing industry. I remember reading that up to 40% of fish caught is bycatch. And these are fish that are of the non-targeted species and they often just get thrown overboard when they are dying, dead, or injured. So this statement is definitely not true. Number four, vegans miss meat. So of course, this might be true for when you first go vegan. You know, if you've been eating a certain way for most of your life, things aren't gonna just change overnight. However, once you understand the suffering and you know the death and everything that is behind the food that is on your plate or was on your plate you definitely don't crave this stuff anymore and you do not want to eat it this is why i think that people who go vegan and stay vegan do it not only for health reasons but also for the ethical aspect of it as well 
I first went vegan just about 15 years ago now and I can honestly say that I do not miss those foods. And besides, most of the foods that go to season meat are herbs and spices and you know, they're plants anyways. And if you do get cravings for those foods, there's so many different like mock meat options available on store shelves now that it's really easy to just squash those cravings. But you know, for the most part, no, vegans do not miss meat. Number five, vegans eat lots of processed foods. So yes, some do, but so do most people. Something like 73% of the US's food supply comes from highly processed foods. So this isn't something unique just to people who are on a plant-based diet. But I think that most people who are eating a plant-based diet understand that in order to feel the full health benefits from it, you have to be eating real food, whole or minimally processed foods, just like the ones that I show on my channel. Uh, but yeah, vegans, maybe some eat a lot of processed food, but it doesn't mean that all do. Number six, vegans are nutrient deficient. So in all my years of doing this, I did nutrition coaching and I've you know, talked to thousands of vegans over the years and really nutrient deficiencies are not all that common, especially for people that are eating a well-rounded diet, eating enough calories and then properly supplementing as well. There are some nutrients that vegans are more likely to be deficient from, and that is vitamin B12, D, omega-3s, zinc, iodine, and then for women, iron. But vegans do have higher intakes of certain nutrients that this systematic review goes over here. Polyunsaturated fatty acids, alpha linoleic acid, fiber, folate, vitamin E, and magnesium, which were actually found to be at risk of inadequacy among meat eaters. Additionally, the intake of vitamin B1, B6, and C was considerably higher, especially in vegans. So are all vegans nutrient deficient? No, definitely not, but some care should be taken to make sure that you aren't. Number seven, vegans take tons of supplements. So this just isn't true, but there are three that I think should definitely be considered by all vegans and maybe by everybody, and that is vitamin B12, vitamin D3, and maybe an omega-3 supplement. The supplement industry is a massive, like trillion dollar industry, and you cannot tell me that the small percentage of vegans are the ones that are propping that industry up. No, people love taking supplements. And you know, you see like a bodybuilder or you know, someone online or whatever that isn't vegan, take a handful of vitamins, smash some protein powder, and nobody bats an eye. And then as soon as a vegan takes B12, it's like, oh, <laughs> you're nutrient deficient, you take tons of supplements. And uh, yeah, that's just not the case. Number eight, the vegan diet is boring. <laughs> so honestly, I think it's people that just can't cook that say this because if you guys watch my channel you know that this diet is not boring there's so many different foods that you can cook so many different flavors to experiment with and it honestly wasn't until i went vegan that i started really you know opening my eyes to all the different foods and spices and everything that are out there and i became such a better cook started using such a wider variety of ingredients and every single meal that i cook is like the best thing I've ever had. Like I look forward to every single meal. So no, the vegan diet is definitely not boring, but you just have to know how to cook. And thankfully that is what I'm here and what I do. I have tons of videos on my channel on how to make amazing vegan food. I even have a couple recipe eBooks if you wanna check those out as well. So no, it does not have to be boring and it shouldn't be either. Number nine, the vegan diet is expensive. Boy, I sure have to save money on my grocery bill. I need to buy more meat. Said no one ever. Like the vegan diet is the cheapest diet that you could be eating. All the foods that I base my cooking around and many other vegans do is like the cheapest foods that are out there. Beans, rice, lentils, potatoes. These are all extremely cheap foods, especially if you buy them in bulk and you buy them dry and you cook them yourself. I would definitely say that meat is more expensive. Have you seen the price of it in grocery stores lately? It is expensive, especially the grass-fed, pasture-raised, humanely killed stuff that everyone claims that they're eating. You know, and cheese, eggs, all that stuff is expensive too. And these industries are highly subsidized, so this stuff should be even more expensive than it really is. So of course, you can make a vegan diet expensive if you're buying all of like pre premium prepackaged stuff and like green juices and you know vegan cookies and all this sort of stuff but 
It definitely doesn't have to be expensive. Number 10, being vegan is a privilege. So in general, getting to choose what you buy from the store and what you eat is a privilege when looking at things on a global scale. We are very lucky here. And there are many places around the world that do not have the same choices that we do, and that's generally because of limited resources. There are even food deserts in the USA where the only options for miles are fast food restaurants and gas station snacks. So yes, compared to those places, being vegan is a privilege, but it's not usually the people from those places making these accusations. The people saying this are often people who have the same access to food as I do. So just because something might seem privileged compared to what others have, doesn't mean that we shouldn't still try and make the best decision possible, the one that's best for us, the environment, the animals, and all that. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you think that I got any wrong, let me know in the comments down below. If you have any to add to this list, definitely let me know in the comments down below as well. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe so that you can see more from me, and I will see you soon with another video. Thank you for watching. Here's some other videos of mine that I think you might like, and if you're looking for some delicious and healthy plant-based recipes, check out my new recipe ebook, Easy Vegan Comfort Meals. It contains over 60 plant-based recipes, lots of delicious sauces that I know you're gonna love. Thanks for watching, and thanks for the support.